USA is now the second largest member of the Global Speakers Federation. Why? Because Australia kicked out half of their members because they weren't speakers. <laughs> And then we heard from Ann Schuler. Ann said that you can buy love, loyalty, and recommendation, but if you pay for recommendation, it's not authentic. Let me just add that if you pay for love, it ain't authentic either, but pff, who cares? <laughs> she also said that, and this was kind of strange, on Santa's website, you can click on Santa and he takes off his clothes. And this made the server crash because women were going on there clicking on Santa wanting to see what he looked like without clothes. Ladies, if you want to know what Santa looks like without clothes, walk up to any old fat man and ask him to get naked. He will. <laughs> then Lothar came up to turn over the, uh, the presidency of GSA. He said he sent out 11,000 emails and got 6,000 replies. He said he doesn't know what that means. It means 5,000 people deleted your email. <laughs> and then, then he received possibly the longest standing ovation I have ever seen. I mean, I timed it. It was like four minutes. The Pope averages three minutes, you know, so that was... And then he showed all of the pictures of him with different people. And did you notice in the pictures he never wore the same outfit twice? If you want, next time I think you should lead a tour of Lothar's closet. You know, it's probably bigger than my house. <laughs> and then uh, he introduced the new president, Gabby Grubner, who was in inducted. And the first thing she did was to give Lothar a gift, I hope I got this right, of two nights in a junior suite filled with women. <laughs> and that made him cry. <laughs> but it would make everybody cry, you know. <laughs> And then she said, Gabby said her motto is words are action. And I really like that, words are action, because if your words do not promote action, no matter what they are, what action is, whether it's motivation or, or inspiration or even laughter, your words then are only words, and anybody can say words. Just ask any politician. Okay. Some of these are really not meant to be funny. You know, they're, they're more poignant. That was one of them. Speaking of not meant to be funny, next we heard from Warren Evans. And Warren started with a joke about Americans. He said, Americans come over here to see things they can't see at home, like the Hofbrau House or the Glockenspiel or a Canadian keynote speaker. And he said, we need to know what to do when something goes wrong, like when people don't laugh, kind of like now. <laughs> but that's okay, because pretty soon I'm going to become a brain surgeon. <laughs> and then he said, you should never do new material in front of your colleagues. Well, now's a great time to tell me. That's all I do is new material. <laughs> And he talked about the book called Sex for Dummies. And he said, who buys this book? I'm guessing it's ventriloquists who are trying to breed. <laughs> Sex for Dummies. Again, that one was done just for me. I really enjoyed that one. <laughs> then we heard from Naomi Rhodes. He said she's been on a plane every week for 40 years. I don't even want to get on a bus every week for 40 years. I mean, that, that's just too much. That's why I got into speaking, so I could stay home, because the market was bad. Then she said, if you know what you want to do, you will find a way to do it. And that is true, because I have always wanted to go to Oktoberfest. I'm sticking around this week. I'll be there Saturday. <laughs> And then you told a story about a guy who said he had the saddest day of his life because his wife of 25 years, they were at the Grand Canyon, and she was standing on the rim of the Grand Canyon, and she said she was going to leave him. And he said that that was very sad. I would have said, really? You're leaving me? Have a nice trip. <laughs> she was on the rim of the canyon. And if you want to leave footprints, you either have to walk on higher ground or in wet cement. Then, 
Then Richard DeHoop, this was great. He got a standing ovation at the beginning of his speech. And then he came out and he played all sorts of cardboard instruments, but was very good at them, you know, very good. And he asked what kind of instrument we were. And he had all those different instruments up on the screen. And I couldn't find exactly my instrument. I think I'm kind of like bagpipes. <laughs> Unique, but very annoying. <laughs> You know why bagpipers are always you know why bagpipers are always marching <laughs> to get away from the noise. <laughs> and then uh, oh, let's see what happened then. Then then uh, we had everybody uh, sa oh then uh, he had Richard had everybody sing until the meter went up to a hundred and then Lothar came back and he decided to do a a, a video a, a get well card and had everybody singing and I got to tell you that that was enough to scare anybody into getting better. <laughs> Then Garrett Dons got up, he's a creativity specialist. He said two techniques, two techniques to be creative. First, you get yourself a 6,000 year old toothpick and then figure out what to do with it. I would sell it to a very gullible museum. <laughs> and then second, he said, what gift would you give to your customer if you wanted to make an enemy? A 6,000 year old toothpick. Then Shelley Rose Charvet got up. She said, the problem, the problem is other people. And that, you know, if this is true, I would think that hermits would be much happier. You know, because they're not around people. It's not nearly as good when you got to explain them. All right. Then she said, there will never be not a crisis. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know what that means either. And then three new attitudes. One is mental hibernation. This is when your audience falls asleep. Uh, the second attitude is the chicken. This is when the speaker runs around the stage like she's possessed by the devil. <laughs> and the third is the broadband attitude, when instead of listening to you, the audience is playing with their iPhones. <laughs> and then she said she's coming out with a new app, a new app for the iPhone, the husband motivator. Really? You need an app to figure out what motivates husbands? I'll tell you what motivates them, food and sex. <laughs> if you don't want to have sex, make them a sandwich. <laughs> an app for that, all right. And then finally, Hans Uwe Kohler came out and he wrote a book called The Perfect Speech, even though there is no such thing as a perfect speech. But he's planning a series of books on the same topic. He's going to have things that are impossible. He's going to write The Perfect Husband, The Perfect Wife, and The Perfect Politician. <laughs> and he said, you need to laugh at failure. So really, every time you don't laugh at one of my jokes, I am cracking up inside. I really am. And finally, he talked about speaking at a funeral. And I, I had to do that one time. A friend of mine passed away, and, and he was an atheist. And I was asked to give a speech. And I said, here lies a man who is all dressed up with no place to go. <laughs> OK, well, that was the last one I had. Hey, it's been wonderful being with you again. I encourage every one of you to please visit my website, daleirvin.com. Click on the little icon that says Friday Funnies. I will send you a video every Friday that will make you laugh even more than you did here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dale Irvin, the professional summarizer, and I'm here at the GSA convention to summarize it for everyone in the audience. But let me just give you a brief recap of what we learned this year. First of all, we had all kinds of speakers. We had speakers from Germany and Austria and Switzerland, Canada, the United States, and you know, I really only understood the ones who spoke English, but they were all pretty good. I really enjoyed watching them even though I, I, didn't, I didn't understand them. The best thing, the best thing about this conference, other than the people, other than the things that you learned, is the fact that we are just about a 10 minute tram ride 
from the Hofbrau House. And if every convention was like that, I, I would be there every time. So do not miss the upcoming 2012 GSA convention in Dusseldorf, because I'm pretty sure, not positive, but I'm pretty sure they have beer there too.